Hello and welcome back to Crypt Monkey Paints where we are painting a beautiful elf house today which I want to say I'm going to finish it today but that's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. It's awesome. It's huge and it's fun. It's technically two stories but the centerpiece of the big tiny big piece at the very top should actually be like an attic floor but there's not a playable floor. So we'll just stick with it's a two it's a two story. So it's got a whole bunch of pieces and I also decided to do the smart thing and I'm going to paint the interior first so that I'm not holding on to the painted area while I'm trying to paint the interior. I'm smart there. But this is by Lost Adventure Company and we backed two Kickstarters for them by, for now. So far is what I'm trying to say. So, all right, I'll have a good night. I'm out. Bye. Peace. <laughs> hey, Bali. So. This is a big mammer jammer, so we're going to start painting. And I have to adjust my camera. Over here. Get a big view. That's how big it is. Person can... Oh, and to also further the motion sickness that you now are experienced with the camera, I have new paint holders. That was a wonderful... Mother's Day gift for me. So look at the organization of that shit. Is that not a mirror? So the top is not quite as pretty. You guys can all tell what my favorite uh, bottle type is. So that's not as organized. I mean, it's actually really well organized. Like I've got my colors, like all my blues, all my purples, my reds to my pinks. And then my brow shite. Hi, Gareth. And then like all my metallics are over here. So it's actually really well organized. It's just not awesome. Because, I mean, it is awesome. I have some bottles I need to finish up. So, thank you. I am very, very happy with it. found these on Etsy. And I will um, I will put a link in Discord later because I forgot to get a link ready. Now I'm going to readjust. So here is our mu mushroom elf house. Fix. I think that's good. So be able to get up again. Damn it. So this piece comes off. And this is technically where the second playable floor sits. But I have a tendency to have trouble getting that outside and put it in there. And this piece comes off and there's the first playable floor this piece is not hollow it's so that's just decorative um but this piece completely hollow and then this piece is also hollow so technically that's not a foot like an attic playable area but story-wise it could be your players just can't get up there maybe they can't get up there because they haven't figured it out yet that's scare says it's awesome and just cluttered enough. I know, right? I, I feel much better now at least. Like everything is color organized. And also like all of my shades are right here. And all of my blues are right here. My purples are right here. My metallics are over there. So now it's, it's a lot less digging for colors. So Ty printed this in PLA. Get off of there. I love the little, that little window to come out and, and sunbathe on their deck. It's awesome. Um, so this is terrain pieces we are finally getting into. So all I, and he pin, printed it in the gloss black because we did some tests with the matte black and guess what? There isn't a difference in. At least from this company yeah i'll give you two guesses you need one um so we just we're gonna stay with a there's a reason to stay with the gloss black honestly because there was so subtle of a difference side by side i couldn't pick out which one was which and also the mat is damn near impossible to get because it's always sold out okay so uh the only thing i did was painted picking a brush 
painted the areas that I wanted to be really bright. I put a layer of white on them just so that I could have a, a good base to bring things up. And this is our big picture window, so I have special plans for that. But I'm going to be smart about this, and I'm going to paint the interior first. So I think I'm going to go with the floor first. And Ty can talk more about the actual printing stuff because this is his printer doing the baby, printing these babies. Oh, and before he takes over jabbering, I'm literally using the Walmart brand paints for 99% of this. It is all going to be that just because there's so much coverage area. So. That's going to be a thing. And I'll, I mean, I'll bring my, my mini paints into it for details and stuff like that. But these main coats. And he did ask me, and I, I wanted, we did have an option to print this in brown. But having him print it in black and then painting the brown, all my crevices are nice and dark. So I can just not even really have to worry about shading underneath. Okay, now I'm going to shut up and let Ty talk about the printing. <laughs> well, the, uh, Dawn was mentioning we also have new ELA that we're using for this, and this would not be a print that we would actually ship out because there was delamination, and it, it wants a hotter temp. It's like for for this. Uh, yeah, there actually you just went by a spot that that is a really good spot too. Yeah, right there the. The hole that you see there behind your finger, yeah, that shouldn't have happened. You can't see my finger, but you. But I think I've got it dialed in now. I hope so. We're we're doing an even bigger piece right now. It's gonna take all week to do. Yes. So. But it's gonna be an amazing piece. Yeah, it's just a one of those adjustments. I think I don't. Well, I don't know. I say we had to adjust when you got the new resin, but that may not. Yeah, be. we did. Oh, we did. Okay. I did. I'm still kind of dialing in that new resin. Um, I'm having more failures than what I'm used to. But that being said, I'm kind of used to no failures. So I'm, I'm kind of used to put it on the plate, hit start, walk away, come back, everything's done, everything's good, and I'm, I'm good to go. Um, with this, I have more of like a... 95% success rate, which to me is, is not okay. So I'm still kind of dialing it in. Oops, too high. And this is, uh, this, this PLA prints also on a new machine too. Uh, I pretty well got used to it with the other PLA we were using. Don mentioned that the, the map, the matte colors are always gone. It's actually another company that was, uh, full of it, which I, I like their, their, their PLA. It's just. We really wanted to do the the mat with them, and it, yeah, it's never in, never in. Yeah. Well, and also we wanted to buy in larger spools, and I don't know if filament had those filament. I I didn't see any three or five k. I mean, I could be wrong, but um, the Xylotech did have the five k. I mean, huge spools. Yeah. So we 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 save a couple of bucks on it, which is important right now. I mean, we're I haven't sold any filament stuff yet and uh trying to learn the process so it helps to to save a couple of bucks but that i mean the i think it really is i just need to learn the filament better simply because somebody like uh uncle jesse was who suggested this one this company around who's a very very good 3d printer yes he does he does both himself, right? The resin and the mm -hmm. filament printing. But I mean, at least structurally on the outside for us, it worked. I mean, it's still a, a it's a mini that we're going to get to play with. Yeah. Technically tech priest, I could throw some shade in there and some things like the rugs. I probably will. Um, but I tend to. I tend to not do that sort of thing when I'm painting terrain pieces just because mini paint is expensive. Mm. 
Tech Priest says he's pretty thorough, and Uncle Jesse is entertaining to watch as well. Yes. Yeah, we agree. He, he's one of the couple of go tos that we have for yeah. for learning some things, especially about products with Uncle Jesse. That's kind of what I've went to him for. Um. And Tech Priest said, "Not gonna throw some shade." I, I wonder I was... if 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 he doesn't mean like on my poor print job. <laughs> One of the things that I found a big difference for filament versus resin is um, dry brushing on filament doesn't work so well. Because it picks up more of the layer lines than it does the details of the model. So that's kind of a, an adjustment that I've been working with as well of, you know, like, <coughs> just shit. Who am I supposed to say hello to? Uh, it was Tech Priest. Oh, damn it, Tech. I have to, <laughs> happened to look over and... Wasn't able to read it fast enough to prevent myself from... Our internet's working well today, apparently. Yeet. No hey, time to prepare. We've had some issues with our internet over the last couple of days. Yeah, and speed test looks fine. Bumpy, even though it's super fast. Go interwebs. I agree, Tech Priest. We got the our business package upgraded for internet recently. So nice that it's faster, but a little bumpier at the moment at least. Yeah. Really sure why it's doing that. It's not super fun. I've literally am just Touching the tip of my brush, kind of make wood lines. And I've got a cream color and a white and the brown that I was using. Not mixing it. Hold on. It's just a blob of different colors on the on a section on my palette. That way I get different colors happening on the wood itself. So, it looks like a wooden floor. I'm currently debating on the carpet color. I was thinking I might do two different rugs. Like this one be one color and that one be another color. I was thinking this one maybe blue in the inside and then kind of a gold trim. No, because they have vines. I mean, they're elves, so, you know, maybe they've got some money, but then they've got vines growing in their house. So maybe they're more, maybe they've got money, but maybe they're more woodsy people and they wouldn't have something with gold trim. They'd have something that's more like earth tones. Dirt colored. So maybe I should be going with with more earth tones. I don't, I don't know. Earth points out that the uh, the carpet should match the drapes. Wait, have you thought about the color of the drapes yet? Moving on. Maybe I should do orange just because that's one of my favorite colors. And that's why I'm always out of orange. Kind of a big piece and I feel like I'm not holding it on camera well. No, it's actually looking pretty good.
got this lighter kind of brown. I'm going to get these tree branches in here. Because I don't want them to match them to stay. And they've got, I know it's hard to see right now, but like there's a leaf right there and a leaf right there. How's everybody's week going so far? You know, Ty's been slamming out stuff for the Patreon. Yeah, we'll, uh, got more pieces for me to. We're doing proof tomorrow. To proof tomorrow already crazy i was i was i was hoping it'd be done sooner but the truth is is we had a pretty busy week so why i thought that would happen it's funny that i'm painting this wooden house and i because those paint stands are like cut with a laser so they're and i got them in and i put them to i put one together yesterday and one together today um, so they are very much still that burnt wood smell. Like every time I go into my office, I, I look around to see what's burning. Here it says, good packing and sorting through stuff for the move and may paint a bit tonight, but the weekend was good but busy. Are you still going to be able to, because I, I saw you get on, I think it was yesterday, yesterday. Mm -hmm. but I was not going to, that wasn't going to happen. Um. You still going to be able to stream again tomorrow? If if you're packing, I'm guessing you're at that point where you wish you were done. Yeah. Uh, Polytum says, I refuse to have busy weeks until school kicks up in a couple of weeks. I just want to live like a hobo until then. <laughs> I get that. That sounds pretty good. All right. Uh, on, Orange. Here says, I'll stream this week and next week. I thought so, but I wasn't positive. Really great. I can't read. Your Caro Orange. It's, it's not a super bright orange, but I think it's going to make a really nice... Like earth tone. I might even put some of that on some of the mushrooms. Oh. But I'm not going to do that yet because then I can't handle the outside of the buildings. I can't hold the buildings. Almost matches our company orange. Or maybe it does. I don't. No, it's not bright enough. No. Uh, Gareth says, almost there, there's going to be some at last minute packing the night before because there's a lot I kind of keep right up until the end. Yeah. Yeah. You have to eat. You have to eat on something. We did that. I took, when we were moving um, from the other house we were in across town to this house, we, uh, I started t taking anything and everything that we could live without and started boxing it immediately uh, as soon as we decided we were moving. And then it got to where basically our dining room was just the hall of boxes. Mm -hmm. And we were down to, you know, one pan to cook with, no books to read. Um, all of our clothes were available, but, you know, it wasn't... Nothing was in the dressers anymore, and it was, when it was time to actually pack the U-Haul, everything was ready to go into it. Um, we had everything in the U-Haul, out of the U-Haul, and, like, we made three trips in one day to load the U-Haul, unload it, back over, load it, unload it, and it was crazy. <laughs> I cannot believe we got it done that quickly. Now, also keep in mind that we moved 10 minutes away, so it made more sense to have a smaller U-Haul and pay less money and just drive back and forth. Yeah. Um, but we knocked out that move super, super fast, except for the attic. Attic 
sucked. I don't even know why we put anything up there. So stupid. Stakes were made. Yeah. That was a... Yeah. That was like a third story, too. That was tall in that house. Uh, Bolly Tippett says, My heart goes out to anyone packing for any reason. <laughs> Eris says, Clothes are needed, beds and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I have a few boxes already at the girlfriend's place, and the ex and I are going through some stuff together on Friday. Uh, and that's my plan to just have my helpers come and load and unload stuff. Yeah. Ollie Tim says, I'm exhausted just hearing it. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm done moving for at least 10 more years. Bless Gareth. <laughs> yeah, what I remember is actually, uh, because we, we spent, this is not an exaggeration, there was always something that happened. We spent 10 years trying to buy a house. Uh, a big part of that was, you know, we was super poor, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I remember when we, we closed on the house, obviously we hadn't moved anything in yet, but we had the keys and we spent the night and our kids at that time were like 12, 10 and nine, I think. And we just camped out on the, our bedroom floor with the pizza boxes. We ate yeah. pizza and camped out on the floor. <laughs> Our house, yay! Finally. Right. I still remember when I, I had come and seen the house, and I was like, eh, it's okay. And then we brought the kids to see it, and they were like, Mom, we have to buy this house. There's a turtle in the yard. <laughs> no joke. Lawn decoration. I'm like, we can get that at Lowe's for like 10 bucks, guys. It, it doesn't have to be this house because of that. And they're like, no, 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 look at the trees in the yard, and it's got a turtle. And I'm like, okay, I'm just... I mean, they were done. They they didn't want to see any other house but this house. That was it. They were sold. And even as young adults, they're like, we move. Are we bring in that turtle? Right? I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yes, we're taking the fucking turtle. At this point, it's my turtle. The turtle is absolutely moving with us. It's literally just a concrete turtle. There's... They're dime a dozen, but my turtle now. I've moved him around the yard and, and put him in different places, and currently he's sitting right by the door. So if you ever come to the house, you can see the turtle. Jack Reese says, turtle, turtle. Yep. Wally Tippett says, hey, it's like that, though. I don't think anyone moves for shits and giggles. I've moved every two to three years since childhood. So this last purchase, been here for five years. I don't want to leave because I'm over moved. Yeah, I have moved an insane amount of times in my life. Um, just beyond anything that would be considered normal. It's ridiculous. Yeah, both of us were like that growing up where six months to a year and you were on to the next place. Yep. Um, and then we got together and started we, doing it anyway. Yeah. We, well, we lived Same like, thing. we only lived like a year or year and a half together in Louisiana, I guess. But then the next place we lived here in Missouri, we stayed there for six years, the next place for three. And then the next one for, I don't know, another three. I don't know. I lost track now. And now we've been here since 2011. time for us yeah that's the nice thing about having this many pieces too is i can very easily move on to the next item without having a head on a spit gareth no <laughs> i was lost for a moment you're talking about my head no, I was like, every time he picks that up, I'm like, just, I giggle. Because I'm like, that just seems so mean. Uh, Bali Tumas says, my dad worked for IT companies in the early 90s. What a yikes time for that field. Companies went under because a shift wind blew on Tuesday morning. So we moved. I bet that was kind of at the cusp of big hires 
software becoming king like that. Nowadays, I think in a lot of careers, certainly IT, just don't stay one company long because it's the best way to get big raises is go to the next company. Sorry, I'm like off in my own little world, just painting floorboard. I think it's the weather. I was just talking about how it's drying up, so now we have like a 92% rain tonight. 50% tomorrow. Oh, well, at least we got the grass. Well, or cut the grass. Yeah. It was very, very nice. So, Gareth, did you see the the new file that came out this week from White Werewolf Tavern? Completely lost the name for a minute. The Goblin Mechanic. I didn't spoil it. Spoiler alert! I mean, technically it's not really a spoiler alert because I already put it in the Alter the Stream, so people probably have seen it. But little dudes in a, I can't think of what to call that thing, but it's freaking awesome. I haven't gotten a chance to print it because realistically speaking, I very rarely print anything for myself anymore. Um, I'm going to switch over to that other window to share my browser oh. oh you know what i need to check that that uh garris is not yet how is it yeah i was answering him um the pieces that it looks like it the, the way they've divided out the pieces some of them are like eh, you could have just left that on as a one piece but then again um it, it's it seems like they really were thinking about less about the assembly of the piece and more about, well, you would paint this to be this color and this to be this color. So they really kind of thought about the painting of this model and, and how they broke it up, which I say that like it's a surprise, but they really do kind of, it really does seem like that's kind of how they think about how to divide their model, not necessarily this is what would fit best on a a build plate, but more about if you have this piece separate from that piece, it'll be simpler to paint. Uh, like Tarnia, she can, I'm uh, probably butchering that name, but uh, um, she can, I can print her as one solid piece and it's no no issue whatsoever. Um, to fit her on the build plate, but considering she has feathered arms and this weird horny crown, having those separate from her body makes it easier to paint the things that you would paint in different ways. So, is this? I know it's kind of small for you, but does that look like that? Is too small for me to tell. I'm sorry. Um, that's not, no, that's just their, like, welcome package. I've got oh, it I was on. looking at those things down there. I've got it in the, already saved and downloaded if you want to. Oh, that's, that's this release. This that one? picture right there. Okay, I will. And they have definitely been on the ball. This, uh, this month with getting all their files released super quick. That was 
Yeah. So the Goblin Queen is right there in the center. And I am definitely going to be painting her because she is badass. I have no need for her whatsoever, but she is badass and I'm painting her. Pretty good bust, too. Yeah. Um, and then the Goblin Shaman is up right there where Ty's cursor is. Then there's a, a Shaman bust right up next to the Goblin Queen bust. Oh, yeah. And then cool. right next to that, there is the the goblin mechanic right there in that little mech. That's pretty great. So yeah, the, the mech is pretty freaking awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. The also you can see there's one goblin riding a warg. Uh and Fair then way. there's also just the warg. Then you got all these little goblin fighters, but you also have a, another female goblin rogue. So it's all kind of goblin fun, honeys. Yeah, running with the daggers look. Yes, definitely. <laughs> it's not a question of need. It's a question of desire. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, like as soon as I saw her, I, I completely had everything painted in my head already. It was, it was that quick. I knew exactly what I wanted to do and everything else. So yeah, very much looking forward to getting her printed and painted and I, I haven't decided if I'm going to go bust or full model. Um, I haven't painted very many busts uh, still, so it probably, it might very well be a bust. Well, you could do the shaman and her bust or do her and his bust like that. Yeah. Well, I'll probably do the the mechanic. mechanic before I do the shaman. Cool. But the shaman has a really phenomenal base, too. Adding a little bit of the orange to the green on the leaves to add a little dimension in there. Trying to decide now my. Yeah, Gary says, why not both? <laughs> uh, because my printers are constantly taken over by customers, which is not a bad thing, but that's why not. Um, we did get a new machine, but I think we're trying to figure out settings. Is that what's happening? Yeah, I want to talk about it. Oh, no. <laughs> It's a different different brand, so we're it's got big personal adjustments for us to, to <laughs> Oh hello Regina. Hi Regina. So I've always had all Elegoo. And I branched out. I moved past Elegoo. On my suggestion. Oh, we're done talking about that now. <laughs> You know what? What? Mystic Orange. No, I'm not going to do a Mystic I'm going to do the Fire Lizard Orange. I'm going to use that as my, my edging for this carpet. This is a nice bright yellow. Different brush, different brush. How's it going? Regina specifically, because I already asked everybody. Else. <laughs> My palette is very like. It's funny because the house keeps getting like way too warm and then way too cold and way too warm. I got cold in here last night. Yeah. <laughs> Gareth says, Fire Lizard! And, we, and Gareth and I were talking about that last time. Of, it was definitely both of our, one of our favorite oranges for both of us. Oh, our dog is bored. 
He was doing that last night. I thought it was. Sound was. Pretty good, a little under the weather, weather due to allergies. Ugh. Yeah, Cora did the grass, but I stepped outside and still got hit with allergies <laughs> afterwards. I am one of the few lucky ones that have very, very few allergies. Um, basically, pet dander makes me go sometimes. Yeah, I guess the grass thing is like a hay fever. I, I never had that before. Like, I can even... I don't even react to poison ivy or poison oak. It doesn't bother me. That I, one's always gotten me. I, I do consider myself extremely lucky. As a kid, me and my little brother ran through a field of itchweed. It was terrible. It was awful. Well, that's actually how we figured out that I don't react to those things. Is my older sister Heather and I were roughhousing. And, uh... Mom came out to see what we were doing and found us rolling in poison ivy or poison oak. I can't remember which one now, but Heather was uh, not too happy about that. Regina says it hits me harder in the fall, but the pollen count is so high right now it's causing drainage. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. It's definitely not fun. I think it's the dishwasher I'm hearing that I thought was rain outside. I do believe so. Huh? I do believe so, yes. Excuse me. Clean up around these edges. There is another huge difference between resin and filament. This whole house assembled, put together, all that kind of good stuff is one pound, one ounce. I would guarantee this would be at least three pounds if it was in resin, and I would guess closer to five. Yeah. So, massive difference there. I mean, this piece alone is just like, it, it weighs nothing. Sorry, I know that's probably like really annoying. He says, I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Yeah, we're supposed to get rain tonight and maybe tomorrow. Like a quarter flip, whether or not we'll have it tomorrow. Hitting the couple of edges on the leaves with the yellow since I have it out too. All right. Check my hand before I scratch my face. <laughs> All right. So now we have one rug base coated. Need an outer color, outside color for that green rug. I love having all my colors like color coordinated now. I know everybody's favorite. Let's go teal. Not a real color. It's just a, it's a wrapper name over color. This is technically turquoise. Something else. Of there says we might get some severe storms here tonight. Well, I hope you don't, because that's no fun. Yeah, we haven't gotten too bad of storms yet this year. It's been so cool. Like, winter just held on for so long. Now, like you said, it's yeah. flipping and flopping during the day. Really warm. Last night, I was shivering. 
Uh, Polly Tim says it's fake color. Big color has been lying to you for years. Big color. <laughs> I'm picking that one up. Colorblind folks unite against big color. A made up color just to get you to buy more uh, crayons, right? Having this blue in here is going to kind of match well with what I'm planning on doing with that big picture window. Shade of turquoise. I feel like I'm, I'm just slapping paint around and making a mess, but... I'm... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just cleaned up nice on that other one. Yeah, it went away pretty quickly. And I will, Bali, be putting a shade on that. Oh, wait, that wasn't you, was that? No, it was a no. tech priest. Tech priest. Sorry, Bali. I love you. Sorry. <laughs> tech priest, damn it. He was talking about throwing shade at me. And he admitted it. I don't see it. Scroll back and show me. Right here. Oh. No, didn't see it. Okay, right there it says you got me, Ty. Or you got it, Ty. T. Well, that doesn't mean anything. We could have been talking about anything at that point. You know what? Not really. I wasn't paying any attention. And Kara says it's all part of the plan. So this one has like different layers. It almost looks like a a pattern. Can't pick it out well enough to decide. Almost. Regina asked, "Did you enjoy the Sakura?" Dragon last week. I haven't had time to watch the video yet. Um, so I did and I didn't. I it was going super super well, and then I was like, oh, you know what? I'll make it look, you know, like the outside of the blossom, and put this pink right here, and it'll be awesome. And it was horrific. It was horrible, and I could not make it work. Um, so I basically cleaned it up and covered that up, and went back to. Making the dragon look like branch, the branch part of the tree. And then I added the flowers on. So when I undid the horrific pink mistake that I was doing, it, it got better. Yeah. Fixed it. I fixed it. I really enjoyed the overall process. I just... I thought something was going to work, and it did not. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. I have this really dark, deep ocean blue. And all these blues will make sense. A little while. A fancy oriental rug. Yeah, I think you picked the pattern out. It looks right. <laughs> Not terribly worried about getting in the grooves because I am going to put a, uh, a wash on this as well. Like this 
go around the edges too. Gareth says, that's the beauty of painting. Don't like the color, just paint over it. Well, that one I liked so little that I actually washed it off and then painted over it as well. You were worried about it bleeding through? No, I just got tired of washing because that shit wasn't coming off. <laughs> but it, it, yeah, it's that is a really valid point, Gareth. Is there's no reason not to try it because it's easy to fix and easy to undo and easy to keep going when it's working. I wasn't going to worry about the grooves, but I really like this. I wanted. Dorky, Dorky Dino gifts. Hi, uh. Hi, Dorky. It says, damn, just pull back and nuke the site from orbit. No idea. Completely lost. My mind went straight to the DMV. I'm not sure I'm not picking it up either. Probably something we said. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go to a green. Two out. Gotta pick my green. Ah! Knocking things over, sorry. That's bad it used to be. No. When that when that was on the ground or when my mic was on the table, it was ear piercing when I would drop shit. Like this brush. Brush is doing me nice doing nice to me. The only way to be sure. Oh, <laughs> that's a I should have known that. It's an aliens quote. Uh, hang on, Dorky. I'll answer that in a second. Ty, you want to read from Gareth? Uh, Gareth says it's the only way to be sure. Aliens quote, but it was in reference to her washing off the paint rather than paint over. Okay. Um. Dorky says, do you ever mix your own colors or do you mostly use pre-made colors? Um, so that's kind of a hard question for me. Um, the answer, the simple answer is yes. I mix my colors constantly. Um, but it's not something that I mix it and save it. I just mix like on my palette. I'll just start like throwing colors all over the place. That's why my palettes all get destroyed and I buy cheap palettes so I can throw them away. Um, I clean them and throw them, clean them, wash clean, you know, go back and forth and eventually I can't get the old color off anymore. And then I, yeah, so I mix constantly while I'm working, but that's also another reason of why I like to start and finish a project when I'm, all at one go because of the way I mix my, my colors. Uh, I tend to grab something, see if I like it, and then just start, kind of start playing with it. I don't have a, a set idea of I'm going to make mix this color with this color to get that color because I'm not that good with colors. Uh, I definitely struggle with colors. So 
I just, I go with the flow on that one for sure. Corky says, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I have run into issues where I have, just going to get that brown in there and kind of fix those areas that I hit with the wood. Uh, I have run into issues where I've, I'll be in working on a project and I'll mix colors and then I'll, I'll be done with something or think I'm done with something and then realize I need to touch it up. But I have no idea how I got to that color. It also eliminates my repeatability because I don't know necessarily what the hell I used. So I, when I, I'm commissioned to paint something. It's very much you get what you get and you're going to love it because I'm going to make sure you're going to love it. But if I have to do it again, you're going to get something different because <laughs> I just, I, I can't seem to duplicate again what I've already done. Even when I try, it just doesn't happen. It looks similar, but it does not look the same. Dorky think... agrees. What? Dorky agrees. That's dry enough for me to put in a. <laughs> Let's. We're going to use this crimson shade. I have an orange or a yellow shade, but if I use the crimson. It's going to bring this down to a really re rich color. We're going to use it instead. Vera says, makes sense, but that's also the very reason I don't mix much, plus I'm slow when it comes to finishing projects. Yeah, I... It was an issue for me. And so what I figure to out how to kind of compensate for that is like... Before I walk away... From this project for tonight I'll make sure that I've got all the the floors are done because I've mixed my browns to do that now it's a wood floor so it doesn't really matter but when I start painting the outside of this I'll make sure that all of my tree branches are done before I walk away from that project so that way I can kind of control at least this color all of this color is done. It's Excuse a me. Little too strong. So I'm gonna mix it with some water over here on my side. Though so I didn't want it so rich. So like red, red. So it's about 50, 50 water now. Um, which I do have to say, I think that the Vallejo shades handle mixing with water much better than Citadel does. Uh, their inks, I guess I should say. Because I typically buy their inks over their shades. Not that I find that there's a huge difference between those, but there is a little, I guess. At the moment, I don't think I have any shades. I think I just have the inks. I always try to keep one side of my palette, or not my palette, one side of my The thing that holds water where I clean these, huh? my my brush holder, or my brush oh. cleaner, words, words, people. I always try to keep one side of it with just a little bit of clean water for this exact reason. That I can kind of mix in some of that clear water with my paint if I need to water it down some. 
Yorkie says, I feel like a lot of mini painters don't mix much at all, but I can't imagine having to buy so many variations in colors because of cost, but also space to store them. <laughs> we were just covering that today, Dorky, actually. <laughs> um, it, it is kind of a pain in the ass to have to buy so many different colors. But the reality of it is that when it comes to mixing these colors, it just works much better to have the color that... I don't know. Gareth, maybe it's it's just me, but I don't feel like they mix as well as like when I'm painting on a canvas. They it just seems to be better to to have the different colors. Um but yeah, that's that's definitely an issue. And that's something that I learned Pretty quickly to I don't need to have every single color I just I got a good these are the staples that I need to paint with and then even now like I add colors as I need them um, we were going to be doing that uh, cherry blossom dragon and I didn't have any pinks I, I like legitimately had no pink color except for one um metallic pink that was it that came in a set so i went and bought some pinks and i had two different colors of purple and that was it i'm like i need purples and i need pinks so you know for that particular project i went out and i bought some of those Turkey dino gift says yeah i think you're right and since you're working with smaller amounts it dries so fast so you don't have much time to mix no Regina says, I like having a light and dark for each color at least, then I mix from there, but I also use a lot of acrylics instead of mini paints. Yeah. Well, and then the, that's what I'm saying of like, especially with these bigger projects like Terrain, I'm most of my paint that I'm using tonight is the the Walmart brand, you know, crap. Just craft craft paint not crap but craft paint that i've got sticking around and then i'm using my mini paints for my specialty items here and there like i want to shade down this you know add some some shading to these rugs so i'm doing that but yeah for the most part i'll be using and i i did tone this down as well it's about 50 50 water dorky says oh that's smart for the bigger things yeah um now i mean that that being said I, i'm going to also when it's finished and dry i'll take it outside and i'll spray it with um a clear coat because you know it, it's not expensive paint it will wipe off i'm gonna give you a time check because i don't think you're gonna be pleased with it Oh my god, please don't. It is uh after 7:30 or. Oh. Yeah, it is blown by. This will not be done today. Well, no, I already knew that. Okay. But actually Yeah, that's looking. The interior I'm I'm done with. I'm I'm actually was getting ready to move on to the picture window because that's something that I have put a lot of thought into it's super super awesome so for right now simply going to close this up you look how cool that looks let me move this Polly it says it looks hot flame 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 see this piece i know you guys can't really see what i'm doing i apologize get back a little bit no that doesn't help yeah, this a little piece tall is a little difficult for me to like set in because technically what i need to do you can see this ridge right here i just need to sand that down just a little bit and then it'll slide in but that's how that's the upper piece and then you can see it with that being in there you got no light coming down stupid head but now you can see the, the rug inside feel cool so, Turkey is stepping away and we'll be right back.
Oh, you're going to miss the, the best kiddos. part. Hurry up. Well, you got to take part, care of no, the kiddos. We yeah, get that. And this has little pegs. See the little peg right there, and it's got little peg holes. I'm pointing at that you can't see. And that's why I'm struggling so much. I don't think it needs the peg holes. It kind of pisses me off because I can't seem to line it up right. Okay, forget it. I'm done. I'm I'm gonna cut the peg hole pegs off. I hate the pegs. The pegs and I do not get along. Oh my god. Okay. I'm kind of digging it. <laughs> And I really like this piece. Like the little doorstep. It's so cute. It's so like completely non needed and anything else, but it's like adorable. All right. House has got to shift so that we can talk about this window. I'm going to have to adjust. So this piece is what sits here the top floor right so it's like the first thing you see when you walk up to the house it's like this big beautiful thing um so i definitely wanted to do something special there and when you think about windows and you think about special windows you of course go to stained glass so i'm going with a very simple stained glass I'm just going to put like a tulip sort of looking flower. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a stained glass window <laughs> on our house. <coughs> so, basically, tulip is going to be here. Not really a tulip. It's a very simplistic rose. Actually, what it is, I believe. And getting on this doesn't really matter because I'm going to paint it in black. But that's why the blue was important. Because we're going to use the blues around other areas of the stained glass window. And that's also why I painted this white so that we'd be able to see these reds and blues and greens. And then the division between each color, I'll come back with like a I don't know if I'm going to do a metallic yet or if I'm going to just do a gray, but it'll be like a pewter, you know, because that's what they used to line the, the different colors to hook them together. Like a lead. Lead, yeah. I said pewter, but. Pewter has lead in it. Okay. I may have to do another layer of that red just because it's on the thinner side, but that's okay. And like I said, I'll come back and get all of the, this piece will be Probably brown, actually. Look like a wooden frame. So I'm not terribly concerned about hitting that. I'm more concerned about making sure that I don't have white spots showing when I'm done than I am about having covering over the top of it. I always love it when I start with a brush for one little thing and then I just continue on with that brush. 
This is a slightly lighter green. I do mean slightly. Very. And I know that stem looks super, super big. But again, it's stained glass. It's not um, a realistic flower. So, okay. All right, so we've got the two shades we already used. There's my teeth. Get this one out, and then I will get Phantom Glow. And that will be our four shades. Higher than you are used to. What? You're up higher than you used to. That's why you keep having to lift back up when you're trying oh, to show yeah. something. I think that'll be our four shades of blue that we'll kind of vary back and forth from. All right. And now, to keep my life super simplistic, I am simply going to do geometric shapes. And none of these have to be perfect. Because we're going to come back and line each one anyway. Stay away from the flower for a <laughs> That didn't even get... I, like, I felt myself tense, but that was it. Figured you said... Good opportunity. And stay. I'm wanting to bounce back and forth between all four of the the blues, but I'm trying to be good and just finish. And no, I I have like no existing pattern in my head. I'm just going, ooh, that's a gap. Put that there. But I did look at like a gazillion different um, stained glass windows before I started. That's a thing. outside what i just heard somebody talking like right by the window that kind of happens when somebody's like walking along the side of the house you mean in the street right yeah it just sounds like they're right there by the window but they're not they're on the street i didn't know if i needed to go look in the backyard <laughs> get off my lawn i don't know why i'm trying to hold that Right side up, this is actually way more comfortable to hold. Yeah, so I believe we're planning on streaming tomorrow. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I did. As long as nothing else comes up, I would think so, yeah. I will be continuing to work on this tomorrow. Probably get a lot further a lot faster because the outside just doesn't have that many details. It's a lot of a whole bunch of brown and then playing with mushrooms because you know we're going to have some polka dotted mushrooms. Now, polka dot, polka dot, afro. Sorry. Why am I envisioning a unicorn? What is that from? A zebra. A zebra. Oh, Madagascar or something, right? Okay. <laughs> wow. Yep. 
feel like I'm just making a hot mess, but it will look good once I put the lining on it. That's really what makes it come to makes it look like a, a stained glass is to have that lining in there. Regina says mush mush. Is that from the movie too? I have no idea. <laughs> I just went straight to mushroom. Oh, maybe that's what it is. We did do that. We did watch a couple of movies this weekend, one of which was Chaos Walking. That I thought it was fun. I also watched Old, which I did not so much. I did like Old, though. I've been waiting for that. Uh, nope, just mushrooms, what Regina says. That's what I thought. Okay, that blue is too close to that blue, so we need a new We're going to go super light blue. Ow. My arm's sore. I am storing my paint bottles upside down like I'm supposed to. Um, as you could see from the beginning shots. And I, like I said, I will put these paint racks because they're actually way cooler than they look because um, I'm not using them the way they're supposed to be used. Okay, you guys going to go for a ride again real quick. So, paint racks. So this is the main rack here, right? And then I did stuff and now I can't see. I was just so, getting the autofocus on. There we go. This is a little side rack, but it actually, storage purposes, slides right inside there. But obviously because of my rack the way it is, that's really not a useful thing for me. The way I, you know, have it on a cart like this. So, but you can see all of my paints are upside down like they're supposed to be except for my inks because no not doing that shit i am not storing that upside down don't care what this too thin worried about it coming out the cap kind of yeah yeah not gonna lie that's that's a big concern for me stop and behave yourself okay My phone went stupid. Now I can't see on my phone. Sorry. All right, we're going to try that moonstone instead. Because, like, I went, this is actually two different shades, but. Yeah, it looks are the same to me. So freaking close. We are going moonstone instead. Waited. All right, I'll fix it later. Yeah, that's a much better difference. Much bigger difference. It does look so weird right now, but I know I'm going to be happy with it as soon as I put the lines in. You use like a little fine brush to make them tiny? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll probably... I think my liner brush is too, or my like my eyeball brush is what I call it. I think that's too small. But I think that I've got another brush over there that is a little bit bigger than that. I think this one's just a little too, too arch. As I moved that all around, I can smell the the burning wood again. Or the burnt wood, I guess I should. Huh? 
from the stand. My paint stands. Oh, because they're laser cut, you can still yeah. smell the gotcha. Which I enjoy that smell. Campfire. Not sure what the plans are for tomorrow besides finishing this. Uh, you mean whether or not we're going to world build? Correct. We haven't actually both been kind of going crazy getting everything done last couple of days. Yeah. I feel like I need to organize some stuff, but we may do. I don't know. The last couple of times we thought of topics that I'm like, yeah, we should just do that. <laughs> so maybe that's what we'll end up doing anyway. Just trying to fill in the gaps with missing colors. Yeah, it was fun getting this. It's been busy, but it's been fun getting all of the content. Excuse me. <laughs> getting the, at least a, a beginning template to go on for giving subscribers the the content. Just working on details, so now I haven't touched that red in so long. We get a nice second coat. That red is, I really like the color of it, but it is kind of on the thinner side. Never quite as rich as I want it to be. What time is it now? Oh, uh, 7.56, it's almost 8, a couple minutes to 8. I feel like I haven't streamed in so long, I don't even remember what time we finish. At 8.30. I see, by comparison, like, here's the red, just going straight on this black. You can see, I just can't get that bright of a red. Without, like really really layering it on there uh -huh. so that's why i painted that white really be able to see okay that's the real key having 50 gazillion different Eight brushes. Not so much having 
50 different shades of, of red. It's... <laughs> one got me. Oh, Hi, sawdust. sawdust. Got me too. Get the, get the screaming goat danger. Freezing goat. Painting goat. Painting goat. I was just typing a little. I'm doing a Patreon poll. Placement invite. Putting the finishing touches on my stained glass window here. Well, I guess I shouldn't say finishing touch. Technically, I still need to paint the frame. But that will probably be tomorrow night. You're doing the lead lines there? Yes. <laughs> Got Ty. I saw him jump out of the corner of my eye. I was focused on your window. Yes, Gareth. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Gareth. I don't know why my mouth is preparing for the TH in the name gear. You got me. Know. So did my lisp, apparently. It's because I'm doing details. Everyone's going get, to get duck happy now. Ah, too much. <laughs> yeah, I'm fixated on my lines here. Sorry. Garrett Gar says, scared the lisp into him. Let us say, uh, stained glass window. Is this an elf house? Yes. The Natari elf house from. Oh, oh. This is the. Lost Adventurers Company. This is the top portion of the house. And it just was like, had this giant big picture window. Uh, Ty, do you want to go to the, uh, the credit screen? Um. You can see it better there because I can't really show the whole house. But that big giant picture window just was like screaming, make me a stained glass window. So I did. And it shot up finally. Okay, that was it. It's much easier to show the whole house on that screen than it is me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like I have to keep moving the camera. Oh, this is sweet. I have gotten the rugs inside done. And the floor inside done, but I have not really started on the exterior of the house. This is kind of the first part. So, I have not made the acorns pie sign yet. But I did want to ask you. I'm thinking sign might be a, you know, have a price listed as well like should they be like five gold or should they be like five silver how good are these pies maybe it's one apple pie for one acorn pie well he spent his points to get that sign made so he gets to decide <laughs> 
Um, Slada says, I just learned something nerdy that ties in my love of old photo gear in Star Wars. Oh, yeah? What's that? I can't really see it, but I am getting the ever tiniest little dab of paint on my brush. Like a legitimately a tiny little ball on the tip of my brush is all I'm going for. Lotus Dragon says the old graphics. Graphlex camera system had a flash kit that went with it. Flash stick or holder was actual first prop for the lightsaber in A New Hope. What? <laughs> That's awesome. Also, guys, there is such a thing as a paint pen. So you can get fine tipped ink pens and do a similar, an extremely similar look to this without the dealing with the paint drying out on my brush, without my, without dealing with the brush folding or anything else like that. So just FYI, if you are planning on painting a whole bunch of stained glass windows on miniatures, maybe look into a paint pen. That's actually what I'm struggling with the most is the paint drying out on my brush so I'm having to beat the devil out of it on my palette over here oh. every now and again it helps to just wash the whole damn thing out guess I didn't mess you up since you didn't yell um, Soto says you want me to put a pick on Discord. Yeah, drop that in the oh. call it geeky stuff. General geekiness. General geekiness. Right. Gara says any they made it spin and just reflective tape on them. Oh, and they made it spin and just put reflective tape on them. That's why I'm a new hope. Most of the lightsabers were mostly white looking. Should have used a wet palette, Dawn. What? Couldn't hear you. Garrett said you should have used a wet palette. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. What? Garrett, Garrett said you should have used a wet palette. All the way over there. <laughs> I wonder if we were going to keep going. I thought about it, but you just keep repeating it, so I gave up. Oh, oh wow. Okay, I'm going to show you this, Dawn. It does look like the picture. But of yes, everyone, Gareth is right. I should have used a wet palette, and this would not be such an issue. 
This is the picture that uh, Sawdust shared. Looks like a lightsaber there. That totally looks. But to a child, so does every flashlight ever. That is it. Ain't sound effects. Was we were watching Raising Hope and the the couple was learning how to fence and he was all excited because he got to use his lightsaber sound effects and she says yes and I'm so excited because I get to stab him when he does. <laughs> See, with the lines in there, it doesn't look like hot, quite a hot mess anymore. Kara says, you should have used a wet palette. Lotus says, hold on, I'll get a drink and then I'll have a wet palette too. <laughs> Dina says, have you seen the Kickstarter to support Ukraine in exchange for many STLs? I have seen a lot of people actually doing that. And I think that's awesome. Going to make gotten. I do wish my lines were a little. How settling or something. That was weird. The funk sound on the deck. See any branches? It's not bad for the first, uh, first, uh, whatchamacallit. First go at it. First stained glass window. First stained glass window I've ever painted. I mean, that's also a fairly large section, so. Thinking it was probably a bird. Thank you for the pretty noise. No, so that's the unicorns. Thank you. <laughs> Damn it, Sawdust. <laughs> All right. All right. There is a whole hell of a lot of mess. I think it looks good. It does. It just, it does look also very messy. So. And dorky is back. Welcome back, Dorky. Welcome back, Dorky. Look what I did. I made a stained glass window. Yay. Oh, this is from thank you to damn it. Right. I think just to make myself happy, and since I do have the brown out, I am going to go ahead and clean up. Ooh. And then maybe I will be happier. Orky says that is so cool. Thank you, thank you. And Gareth says you did an awesome job. And sometimes it just looks like, you know, a hot mess until you clean up the edges, you know? Or just be right back again. <laughs> the joys of parenthood. Yep. Always the quiet moments you should fear. Mm -hmm. They're screaming bloody murder, they're fine. Uh, yeah. They're quiet, they're doing something they should not be. Oops, sorry. Different things better.
So like I didn't mix the brown, didn't mix really any other color. So I think we'll be fine to just pick up where we left off tomorrow night. Lotus Dragon says, looks like a hot mess until you hold it straight up and down. And lo and behold, the rose. Looks great. It'll do. <laughs> It'll do, pig. That'll do. Plan on resetting prints tonight and then eating ice cream in bed. That's my plan for tonight. Lada says, my brain was trying to make Picasso piece from it when it was sideways. <laughs> it's funny because it doesn't matter if it's... Man, my ear is itching like crazy. Sideways or upside down or whatever, I still see the same thing. So, I lost my train of thought. Damn it. I'm going to say something, but I forgot. But it's okay. It didn't matter. If it was important, I would have remembered. I had an ice cream cupcake from Dairy Queen tonight. I didn't know they made ice cream cupcakes. I mean, I knew they made cakes, but I had no idea they had cupcakes. Cora had gone to the store and got ice cream, those little, like, you know, self-serve, or, you know, self, like, one size, pint, whatever the hell they are. But they're all the flavors of, like, the Hostess Debbie cakes. And, like, the the brownie one, the, oh, what, it, it's the brownie with the stars on the top. Cosmic brownie. It's just chocolate ice cream. But the honey bun, now that one doesn't exactly taste like honey bun, but it is really freaking good. So that one is set aside for me. They had a Nutter Butter one that was also really good, but it didn't really taste like a Nutter Butter. It didn't taste like peanut butter at all, really. So some of them were kind of a hit and miss. But Cora very much likes bringing home weird ice creams and having us try them. Uh, the one that surprised me the most was they had a pizza flavored. It's bad. Okay. Uh, they had a... Mac and cheese ice cream that tastes... Exactly like macaroni and cheese. It's really good. I cannot explain it. I am so weirded out by the fact that I liked it. It's weird. But I did. Um, this is what you were reading from the Dairy Queen comment, right? Yes. Did you read Sawdust? No, sorry. Okay, so, well, I see it now, too, from any angle, but before I knew what it was. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I get that. Uh, Regina says, apparently they are now discontinued, but my husband bought the last few from our local DQ. Or he says, my kids are screaming at me because I made them go to bed. I know that feeling. Not miss that. Not miss it. Now but I am sending you my motherly love and compassion. Eventually they'll be old enough that they'll be like, Mom, oh, I'm going to bed. And you're going to be like, I don't care. Why are you telling me? <laughs> Yeah, Cora was like, I'm going to bed. I'm like, it's 7.30 in the, <laughs> in the <laughs> evening. What do you mean you're going to bed? Good God. Because Cora's got to get up really early. Work. Um, Sada says, there's a nutty butter ice cream out there. 
Where he says, I heard the mac and cheese one was good. I haven't tried it. It is. I don't know. I, part of it is the fact that it's like this really creamy, really nice texture. Um, and then it's salty. So it's it's not overly sweet. That's why I love coffee to... ice cream so much. Is because I can eat a bunch of it without getting, you know, sickly sweet. I might like that because when I was a kid, I used to dip my ruffles in uh, my vanilla ice cream. Salty and sweet. I mean, it, it works, you know. Dorky says, thank you, I'll hold out who <laughs> for the kids. Yes, yes. It, it gets easier, honey, I, I, I promise you. Otherwise, mine would be dead. <laughs> It's it's weird to me to think that my youngest child is now 20 years old. The Dino Gifts, are you streaming this evening? At 8.30? I don't like that noise. That's unpleasant. Uh, uh, first, Dorky says, yeah, that seems wild. Then, uh, I moved my art streams to Wednesday. <laughs> Creepshow says, amen, who thought our kids would have survived? Yeah. Not me. It was questionable. When we had the second haircutting incident, I thought for sure they were going to die. Because not only did they cut it off, they had, then they looked at themselves in the mirror, had the brilliant idea to glue it back on. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing, because I want to throw something still. Uh, I mean. Oh, I got so angry. Because it was, thankfully, a long time ago, but. Uh, I thought it was bad. That was a terrible evening. <laughs> Oh, it was so, so bad. Izzy ended up with a mullet. Nick, we just shaved his comp his head completely. I literally spent like the next six to, six to eight weeks braiding Izzy's hair down the side of her head or doing the little tiny ponytails down the side of her head to hide the fact she had a fucking mullet. <laughs> Cora ended up with a complete bald spot this whole section of her head was shaved down to her skull so her bangs were coming from like right back here and forward um creep show says emotional damage uh soda says i don't know how old your kiddos are but the best gift that i ever got him me was a remote control car. I would sit on the couch and drive it around. My son would chase it until he tired himself out. It was a glorious six months. Yep. <laughs> uh, Dorky says there's, there's logic there. Not good logic, but logic. Agreed that remote control cars are great for that. So much easier to play while sitting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what the good news is, though, Dorky? Three is not really any different than two. Same. What is it I used to say when they were little? The terrible twos last for like 12 years. <laughs> They're just grumpy in different ways when they... Yep. But, see, the difference between a grumpy three-year-old, two-year-old, five-year-old, and a teenager is the grumpy teenager goes to the room and slams the door. And then you can start watching your show again. Little one wants your attention. Yeah. Yeah. 
I am happier now that this is cleaned up around the edges. And I'll be even happier with it tomorrow. Basically, you spend so much time with, you know, staring at one thing. You start seeing all of the little mistakes you made and just step away from it for a little while and you'll be happy again. You can see the kind of big grooves in there. That's part of what Ty was talking about with the printer, the, the heat not being quite right. Um, but this is a tree house, so it just kind of lends itself to looking more like wood. Yeah, I'm hoping I have that worked out now. We'll be able to tell in this huge print we're doing at the moment. Which I noticed you did not actually say out loud what you were doing, so I did not either. Just <laughs> FY. Uh, no, I mean, I'll say it's it's one of our shield heads, but we're doing it 225%. The side's going to be big. It's yeah. going to be like, oh, you killed a baby dragon hanging on your wall. Wow, that's enormous. My kid is older. Wait, my kid, older kid, is five, and he was much worse at three than he ever was at two, says Dorky. That was, that was Izzy. Oh, so there's our see stained that? glass window. You feel better about it now, don't you? I do, yeah. So, yeah, it looks much better. Like so that fits why I can't seem to put the lid on this house. Okay, guys, we're going for a ride again. See, didn't that just scream? It needed a uh, thing. I'm trying to wave to the camera over there, and I'm smacking the mic around. So. There. I don't want to paint these rocks while I've got my gray out. What time is it? 8.24. Okay, I'm going to paint rocks real quick, guys. Because, you know, I like to paint rocks. Okay. So Asada says that window is great. Uh and the elf cam goes wacko. Um I don't want to say the the your kids' names, but how old is the younger one now? Because to me, you just had him because well, you know, like we saw you and you were pregnant and then you had just had him and then all hell broke loose in the world. Yeah. So to me, he's still like a newborn. Or he That's says, I love that window. Not even right. He's, oh my God. <laughs> I, he's like two or three now, isn't he? Uh, Turkey says, oh, that's fine. Wolfgang is yeah. two and a half now. That is just, no. Mm-mm. Time flies when you're on lockdown. <laughs> Time flies when you're a parent. <laughs> Insane to me that <laughs> already. Damn it, that got me bad. Hello, Lashigo Games. Hello, Lashigo. Uh, Dorky Dino Gif says, I know it's weird. Nicola is signed up for kindergarten. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Time she flies. Now blink, and you'll be getting him a tux for... Oh, gosh. For prom. It's just, like, so not right. I, like, can't get a grip on this. Look like bricks. I'm gonna paint them like stone. They look like Stone blocks. Kind yeah. Of. Oh, now I'm too high. Oh. That's a great shot. <laughs> you right there as well. I don't know. Ah, I wanted to get white. Got all kind of different colors. 
That's okay. It's also kind of good to have some brown in your stones sometimes. Hey, it's a brown stone. No. No more dad jokes. Dad, all my jokes are dad jokes. Dirty ones. <laughs> anyway we are pretty much done for today I like to just add like five different layers of colors to stone it just makes it look more real um pretty much done for today we got the inside done, we got the floor done, and we got the window done. Everything else is going to be fairly straightforward. It's going to be a lot of paint this brown, paint this red, or, you know, paint this lighter brown, paint this beige, paint this brown. <laughs> because we're going to be, you know, getting the, the outside of it. I am glad that I covered the inside first, just strictly because painting, you know, painting the outside of this and then trying to hold it out of my way while I paint the inside is kind of stupid. And I had a brilliant moment and I thought ahead. I don't always do that when I'm painting. Here says it's true. When you're dad, all your jokes are dad jokes. Even the ones Dawn won't let me tell. Uh, Shigo Games says justice is a dish best served cold. Served warm, it would be just water. Just, just ice. Uh, Sora says inside. There's a paintable inside. Show me, please. <laughs> so, technically, okay, going for a ride, guys. So this is floor number two. So technically you can have your characters up here as well, which I wish I should have brought a character up. So that's that part. We just painted the, the leaves and the floor, wood flooring. Then that comes off. You can be inside the house. Roar! So you can walk through the front door. I really don't understand why this piece wasn't just attached. It should be attached. I think uh, for smaller printers. I mean, we have maybe like you know, like as it is there. I don't. I'm not sure that that would fit on our, <laughs> our Ender Three. It would probably be too small for that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing at the sawdust. His brain's exploding. My mind is exploding. So technically. <laughs> Gareth says that looks awesome. Okay, we're going to back up again. Yeah, you want to autofocus? I just put my finger on the... Oh, that's fine. Okay, so that is the whole house. So playable area, playable area. And then this piece fits right there. Creep Show says, night guys, have a good one. You too, Creep Show. Thanks for hanging night. out. So you walk in, you go over there, and then when you walk over here, that's when you're going to spring the trap for the Mimic. That's where the Mimic goes. <laughs> so I think right here I might just like paint a door. because Oh, sorry. Paint, paint some stairs going up. That way people can get to the second floor. I don't know, so that is, I mean, but that's like the whole point of terrain is to have playable area. So, you know, you yeah. set this out on your map and, you know, doo -doo -doo, knock, knock, oops, <laughs> and everything breaks. On. So your players can actually play on the, on the map itself with the house and everything else. Yeah, I'm happy that we went with the blues and the oranges inside for the rugs. They looked really good. 
Cursor says, uh, turns out the whole inn was just a giant mimic. <laughs> Gonna get me started on those, uh, on, uh, they call the, the dungeon inn, where you go in the tavern and under the tavern starts the dungeon. Mm. Yeah, it looks fun. They've been around for a while now, but I haven't, I haven't got to play in one. All right, well, that is it for tonight, guys. Tomorrow we will be painting the outside of everything and all of these beautiful mushrooms, which I don't know if you noticed. Let me move all that stuff out of the way. But even, like, along the sides here, we have mushrooms. And over here we've got the balcony. Um, and then, you know, you come around the back, you got another window, you've got the knots. The tree knots and all that other kind of stuff. I mean, it's it's got detail all around it. Even on... Oh, it's so noisy. Even on the base itself. You know, like, this is the inside. This is the outer edge. You've got tree knots and vines and all kind of things happening around. Just this little lip of an edge, too. So, uh, that's... Thank you, Gareth. It's going to be a lot of fun, but it's... A lot of the outside is going to be... Get it brown and then start doing some detail. But luckily, you guys will be world building while I'm slapping brown paint on. I can think of a subject. Mushrooms. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. All right, guys. <laughs>